Hello, this is Pastor Mona Kuk Tung. Again, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. I'm delighted uh, you are here today. So today I would like to preach on a sermon call, Are You Prepared to Meet Your God? I'll talk about the rapture today. And um, rapture, this is a very important question at this hour right now. This is the need of the hour. The uh, very important question right now we have to ask ourselves is, am I or are we prepared to meet our God? Because the Bible says Jesus is coming back to get his people. There will be a rapture on the earth. So uh, we are, we'll be talking about the coming back, the, the coming of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why this question is so important right now? Because Jesus is coming back to take us home from this wicked world. Uh, one of the surest words in the entire Bible is that Jesus is coming again. Bible scholars have said that um, there are at least 1,527 Old Testament references uh, about the coming back of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament, there are 380 references to the coming of Jesus Christ. If you miss the rapture, that means you are not looking for Christ right now. People who are looking for Christ, if you are not looking for the Lord, the coming back of Christ, you will be left behind. So that is the sad part. I don't want anybody who listens to this message will be left behind in the rapture when Jesus comes back. So, uh, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being who you are. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for us to wash away, to wash away from our sins and the sins of the world. Lord, we thank you so much for your loving kindness and tender mercy to each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that you continue to bless us. We come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Lord, I pray that you teach me, you speak to me and speak through me. Lord, I pray that you let your people will be enlightened uh, and uh, they will see your word. I pray that you speak to them. Lord, I, I commit all the things that I'm going to speak today will be done for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. And the name of Christ will be lifted up here. I commit the rest of our time in your mighty care, Jesus Christ. Holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Let us turn to our Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, let's read from chap uh, verse 13 through... Let's see here, verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through verse 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen, that means those who died uh, in Christ, those who have fallen asleep. The Bible says if you, if you are saved, if you are, bo if you, if you are born again, Christian, if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, even if you died right now, the Bible calls those people fallen asleep. So concerning those who have fallen asleep, I don't want you to be ignorant, he said. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who Asleep, those who are asleep in Christ. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of, of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we 
who are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Uh, actually, the, the Bible does not uh, mention about the word rapture, but we got the word rapture, the concept of rapture from here. It says, um, those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in, the, in, in clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Nowhere, uh, I mean, the Bible rarely talk about comforting, uh, about the, concerning the dead people. But in this verse, we, see, we clearly see that here. Uh, the Bible says about comforting one another uh, when people die. You know, how do we comfort? With the rapture, with the coming back of Jesus Christ. We have to take our comfort. We have to be joyful and delighted uh, in, in times of death because Christ will be coming again to take us. So the rapture is a message of comfort. The Titus chapter 2 verse 13 refers to it as a blessing, blessed hope. It reads, Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is our hope. This is when uh, the rapture is the fulfillment of the, the, uh, the completeness, the completion I, I, I put that way. Let me put this way. The completion of our hope, our expectation in God, is when the when the church raptured, the church would be raptured, will be caught up in the air, and those who are not seeking the Lord will see, will have to see Jesus for the second time. So uh, there will be a second coming. The rapture is not the second the second coming of Christ. Uh, we we should not uh, misunderstand this. Oh, we should not confuse the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Uh, we don't have time to talk about all those uh, details today, um, right now. But um, the Bible in many places talks about the coming back of Jesus Christ. The credibility concerning about the rapture, the coming of Jesus Christ, is because, number one, the prophets of Old Testament said so. As we, as we have mentioned previously, uh, there are 1,527 Old Testament uh, reference of the rapture in the Bible. And uh, if we look at Zechariah chapter 14, we can see the coming back, the prediction or the prophecy of the coming back of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, uh, in, into the Jerusalem. Uh, God will be coming back to take His people. Uh, God will be fighting for us even in the second coming that the Zechariah chapter 4 is actually chapter 14 is actually ref the reference of the coming back of Jesus Christ the second coming of Jesus Christ and then uh, we, we also see that in uh, Revelation chapter 19 uh, when Jesus coming back when Jesus coming back uh, to reign to earth to earth to reign you know uh, for a thousand years, a thousand a mill millennial reign. So that was uh, one of the Bible uh, verses that talk talks about the um, second coming of Christ. And um, the Old Testament prophets uh, prophesies about the coming of Jesus Christ. And then number two, uh, the, cre the rapture, the coming back of Jesus Christ is credible because number two, Jesus himself said so. In John 14, chapter uh, 14, verse 3, let's read this. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That means Jesus is in heaven right now to prepare a place for you and I. It's going to be really fun seeing the place where you and I are going to live, you know, in future. It is uh, one of the most exciting things. I can't wait to see our heavenly home, the New Jerusalem. The Bible explicitly talks about that too. The Bible talks about the, uh, the heavenly home, you and I. So do not love the world. because uh, Therefore, the Bible says, do not love the world and the things that are in, that are in it. Uh, those who love the world, 
they don't have the love of the Father in them. So this, is, this world is not our home. Our eternal home is in heaven that Christ prepared. Uh, reminded me of the song, uh, Jim Riff's uh, song. Jim Riff's song, you know, uh, it's an old school song. This world is not my home. We are just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels back on me uh, from heaven open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. That was really a nice song. I really like that song too. That reminds me of my heavenly home, not my earthly home. I can't wait to get to heaven. But uh, of course, nobody wants to die, you know. Uh, we are waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ. I'm here, uh, like uh, Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Uh, yet not I, but Christ live in me. The life that I'm living right now is by faith uh, who gave himself for me. For I'm living for Christ who gave himself for me. Paul, Paul says to die is gain and to live is for Christ. Because if he dies, he said, if I die, I will be enjoying the heaven. You know, the pleasure of heaven. But if I live, I want to live for Christ so that many people will come to Christ through me. That's, that's the Christian living. But if he dies, he's gaining. You know, he is gaining. He is going to heaven, his heavenly place, and he will be enjoying, enjoying the, the pleasure of heaven. He will be uh, not experiencing this wicked, evil world anymore. There's no more suffering in heaven. So that was the place Christ prepared for us. And he said, I will come back and take you home. Don't be too, much, uh, don't be too com comfortable here on the earth. I'll come back to take you. So we are a stranger. Even though we are living in the world, we are not of the, of the world. Someday we are going home. We are just passing through here on the earth. We, that's why we should not be comfortable. And we should be polite when you travel uh, outside, abroad, you know, out of town, you, you are not rude, right? You just, you just uh, polite as much as you can, and then you do good things and whatnot. So we are a stranger on the earth. We should not be rude, and we should not uh, commit sin. We should, we should not uh, compromise with the world. And thirdly, the angel of the Lord said so. The coming back of Jesus Christ is for sure. He is coming back. And it's, the, uh, it's credible because the angels of the Lord said so. Acts chapter 1 verse 11. Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in the light. It will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Hallelujah. When Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he, he rose again and he revealed himself to uh, many people. And then he assembled his disciples into, in, and they went, uh, they were together, together in Mount Olives. And Jesus and that time, the disciples were like, uh, they wondering, and they asked him, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom for Israel at this time? But Jesus said, it is not for you to know the season or time that which my father has put in his own authority. But one thing I can promise, you will receive the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me. You shall receive power. You shall receive power and then you shall be a witness at, witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the end of the earth. So that was the promise given. The, the Holy Spirit of promise. When did it fulfill? On the day of Pentecost. That, that's when the church began. The church began on the day of Pentecost and then the Holy Spirit indwelled in us and he... God, uh, Jesus sealed that uh, marking seal, uh, marking that we are His by sealing with the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. And then 
when the trumpet sound, when the archangel blow the trumpet, the last trumpet, those who were sealed with the Holy Spirit, I mean those who are saved, will be caught up in the air. And those who are not sealed, those who are not born again, those who don't have Christ, will be left behind. So that's the key point today we would like to talk about. We don't want anybody who hear this message to be left behind. We want everybody, all the church people, to caught up in the air and meet the Lord and be with Him forever. So Jesus, the angel said so. The Lord is coming again because the, end, the angels of the Lord confirms it. He said, Man of Galilee, why are you gazing up heaven? The same Jesus you saw that taken up into the heaven will come back in the like manner. We are going to see God again. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 of, uh, from verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15. 5-0. Now this I say, brethren, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I tell you, I tell you a mystery. What is the mystery here? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall be changed into glorified body. We shall not all sleep means we are not all going to die before the coming of Jesus Christ. One day... When he comes back, there are, there's going to be a people who are alive who will be caught up in the air. When the Bible talks about sleeping, it talks about those, uh, those, who, are, those who are dead in Christ. The dead in Christ shall rise first. In verse 52 it says, In a moment we shall be changed in a moment in, a tw in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. The last trumpet. Here, the last trumpet has, has a very significant meaning. Uh, there are many trumpets who will, uh, uh, will be blown before, but the last trumpet here, the Bible says, is the rapture, the call, the call of the saints. This is a call, it's a roll call for the saints, God's people, for the rapture. Uh, for, the trumpet will, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immor immortality. So, when this corruptible has put on incorruptible, and this mortal has put on immor immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, that, that is the fulfillment of the prophecy, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hates, where is your victory? The sting of death is, in, is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks to be God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We are waiting for the coming back of Jesus Christ. We are waiting for the rapture to take place here on the earth. So we should not, we should not uh, lose heart. We should not uh, give up. No matter what happens, we have, to, we have to be steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And knowing that your labor is not in vain, uh, uh, people may not appreciate what we do, you know, but we should never lose heart. Knowing that our labor for the Lord, our ministry, our involvement in any ministry, in any capacity, is not in vain. The Lord made, made a record in heaven. So what do we do now then? If we, after all this, we have to repent. We have to believe the Lord Jesus Christ and repent. We have to believe the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord and repent of our sin that we we, so that we shall not left behind. If we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord and repent of our sin, we are we're not going to be left behind. And I would like to look at the, uh, Matthew 24 when Christ talks about, uh, when he prophesies about what's going to happen 
uh, before the, the coming of the Lord. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 1 to 3, verse 1 to 2, verse, verse 1 and 2, Jesus talks about and he prophesies about the destruction of the temple. You know, the temple was built for 64 years, 64 years construction work. And uh, Jesus said that you might be, uh, don't, you, don't you think, don't you ever think, don't you ever imagine this stone will be, Stand here forever. There will be the, the, the destruction will be coming, and then uh, the coming of the Lord and the end of the ages will be coming. There are three questions the dis disciple ask, and then they ask him uh, on, on verse three here, Matthew twenty four verse three. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples come to him privately, saying, "Tell us when will this thing be." That the destruction of the temple and what will be the sign of your coming? Second question. And the third question, question is, what will be the sign of the end of the age? In verse 4 he said, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various, various, various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows, that means Christ is not coming yet. After this prophecy will be fulfilled, Christ will be coming. Only after all these prophecy uh, prophecies are being fulfilled. Here, pestilence, the word pestilence is like um, the fat fatal pandemic disease. Now we see coronavirus and everything. Uh, the coronavirus is one of the fulfillment of the prophecy. We should not... Uh, for one second thought, thing, it is natural. This is unnatural, but this is the sign that Christ is coming back pretty soon. Famine, earthquakes, you know, there are everything all already fulfilled here. The only thing uh, that is not being fulfilled is that he is not coming yet. He has not, ca he has not come yet. Finally, I would like to make my point here. When the rapture happens, we will be caught up in the air. So if you don't believe Christ, and if you're left behind on, on the day of rapture, you, you probably, you're probably going to see the second coming. But if you are caught up in the air and be a part of the rapture event, and if you are with Jesus Christ and all the saints when he comes back in his glories, you will be with him going, going back for millennial reign. So I was reminded, lastly, I would like to mention the all hymns. The, uh, the hymn goes like this. Christ is coming in clouds of glory when he comes. When he comes to earth to reign. He may come in the early morning or he may come in the, at dawn without any warning when he comes. So be ready. Are you prepared to meet your God if he comes today? If you have to die tonight, are you prepared to meet him? If you come today, tonight, tomorrow, whenever, are you prepared to meet your God? We should be ready. I am ready. And uh, to be honest with you, I can't wait to meet my God, you know. Matthew, well, uh, I'm sorry. Revelation 22, verse 12 says, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, that I am going to give to everybody according to their works. And John said, Come back, Jesus. I will be so happy if you come today. So, to be honest with you, I can't wait to meet the Lord. I will be more than happy if he comes back tonight. Because I am tired of this evil world. I'm tired of this wicked world. I, I want to be with my Lord. But before he comes, though, 
I would like to do His will. I would like to live for Christ and be in a ministry and a soul winning ministry. I would, I would like to win souls for the Lord. I would like to uh, get involved in missions work. I would like to catch the lost souls. I would like to reach the world one soul at a time. So let's work together in the ministry of the Lord, in the missions of God, and bring the sinners back home uh, before the rapture takes place. Let's try to catch uh, as many souls as possible. May the Lord bless his words. Thank you.